Praise the Lord. Let's have a, a word of prayer. Everlasting God and Father, we thank you for this moment, beautiful moment in your presence. We are so grateful because we are going to hear from you, from the throne of grace. We pray that the Spirit of God will take full control of this assembly. Speak unto us, your servants are listening. Give us boldness to declare your word, the truth about your word, the mystery that is hidden to the world, that is revealed unto your children. Father everlasting, we are taking control over the assembly. We banish every activity of the devil, and we declare this place no flying zone for the devil in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Bless us as we read your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We thank God for today. We bless his name for this privilege we have to hear his word. It's not given to everybody. It's the grace of God, so we should not take it lightly. And I pray that the Lord will use this moment to touch your life, and you will never be the same in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. The Lord said, God who has, who at sundry times, and in diverse manners speak in this time, in time past, unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Through this we are seeing that the Lord has never been silent, after he has created the whole world, he has given some commandments, some uh, instructions right from the Garden of Eden. The Lord has given them commandments about how to behave, you know, keep them in charge, to till the ground, to do everything. And the Lord has never kept his creatures in dark. He has always spoke to his creatures. And we also see on the span of time, of the creation. We saw the Old Testament. There's another thing called the New Testament. And we are in the new, you know, the, the time of dispensation. And in the Old Testament, we see that God has not leave, left them, you know, without any instruction. The Bible says that God called Abraham. He said, come out of the house of thy father. Abraham heard the voice of God. It's not a whispering. The Lord talked to him. It's an audible voice he heard from the Lord. God spoke to the prophet. God spoke to Moses in the Bible. The Bible say, you know, take my, my children out of Egypt. And he obeyed the voice of the Lord. After he went to the Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments, the Lord was not speaking to him in silent voice. He wasn't using some silent signal and all that as you are speaking to a dumb person. It was an audible voice the Lord told him. He gave him the commandment, the Ten Commandments. So we saw that God the Father operated in the Old Testament. And he has not left all like that. Because people are not understanding the will of God or the plan of God about the creation. And God said, oh, if I change myself, if I come in the midst of them, I look like them, by adventure, they will hear me. And he sent his son. The Trinity is at work at the beginning. Let us create man in our own image. So the son came in the New Testament, lived among them, was breathing, was eating, was doing usually things like we are doing today. And the Lord Jesus Christ in the street of Jerusalem, he spoke the word of God. He exposed the word of God, the mind of God to the people at that time. There was nothing hidden. The word of God was spoken. Hallelujah. And in this new generation, this passation, he said that I will not leave you orphan. Didn't he say that? But I will send the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He will comfort you. He will tell you. He will reveal you. Whatsoever thing that you have not understand, have, uh, understood from me. And we are in the time of grace. The Holy Spirit is at work. God, three-dimensional God, Trinity is at work. And he is not silent. They have all spoken. And Paul, in the book of 2 Timothy, let's read that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, from 15 to 17. The Bible says... 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul was admonishing his young child in the Lord, Timothy, about how he has heard from his childhood. You know, nothing hidden to him. The word of God was spoken to him. And he says in verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's the word of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Lord is giving his word for a, a purpose. The purpose is to, 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 to teach us some doctrine, to reprove us when we are wrong, to correct whenever we are going astray, and to give us some basic instruction, the Bible, basic instruction for believers while living on earth. That's the Bible as an acronym. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hallelujah. And we see that the word of God is, a, is God that's speaking to us. As we are preaching the word of God now, have in your mind, it's not Brother John, it's not the pastor, it's not this brother I know. No, familiarity will, will not make you uh, get the, gain the best from it. But know that God is using the men of God, the children of God, people you know, to speak. To speak his mind, to reveal his will unto you. And the word of God is a living word. It's, not, it's also powerful. Let's read the, the book of uh, John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Let's see what the law has over there for us. John 17, verse 17. But the Bible says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth the word of god is truth it's not a lie because our god can never lie and it's the word that is constant throughout generation the the word of god that is revealed to the people of the old time is the same word that we are revealing unto us today it's a complete truth you know the bible says that two by two immutable things it is what impossible for god to lie it's a complete truth. It's not half truth. It's not what uh, Ananias and Sapphira did, or we, this is how we sold it. But that's a half truth. No, it's not true at all. They have, no, they have hidden some part of the truth there. That's why they were punished. But our God is not a liar. He's revealing his word with a complete and total truth. It's a comprehensive truth. It's something that is understandable. You know, it's easy. When the Lord Jesus Christ was on earth, he was using even some parables, some mere things that you can easily relate to, to explain the will of God to us. It's not hidden at all. It's timeless truth. Hallelujah. It's timeless truth and also eternal truth. Because what? The Bible says that heaven and earth shall do what? Pass away. But the word of God will remain. Hallelujah. The word of God will never pass away. You cannot add to it. You cannot subtract from it because it's eternal, it's timeless, it's a constant truth, it's complete, it's a comprehensive truth, and it's also enduring truth. Hallelujah. And for all this reason, brethren, we have to know that the word of God, which is the personified of God, is God personified. Hallelujah. That word of God, which is Jesus, is dependable. It's a reliable God. Is somebody that kept his promises. All the promises of God are yea and amen. It's not a man that she should lie or repent, but it's a God that can hold him on his promises and he will do great things for us in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Let's open to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's, we are going to read from verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, hallelujah, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of souls and spirit, and of the joint and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. The word of God is powerful. There's nothing, there's no, no way to explain more than the Bible says. It says it's a powerful, it's quick, very sharp, you know. 
is dividing the thought and putting things, is explaining everything. The word of God is dependable and it has also impact. And the impact of the scriptures are, you know, unmistakable. You cannot take it lightly. The Lord has revealed his will and throughout the Bible you will see great, great, great things that has been performed because of the simple word of God. When God's word is approached with a sincere heart and a humble attitude, there are many, 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 many impacts in life of people. Brethren, this is the topic that we are going to observe today, the mighty impact of scriptures, the mighty impacts of the Bible, the mighty impacts of the word of God, which is the scripture of the Bible we are reading. So we are going to see this in seven different areas. First, we are going to look at the word of God as food to nourish, hallelujah, our soul. Second, we are going to see the word of God as water. What do we do water with? We use water to cleanse, to wash, hallelujah, to wash our souls. And number three, we are going to see the word of God as the light, the light of the world to lighten our path, to clear the way so we can see clearly, so we may not stumble. Number four, the word of God as the medicine to heal our souls. The word of God, number five, as a defensive power of weapon to defend ourselves. Number six, the word of God as fire and a hammer, hallelujah, to burn every undesirable birds, every undesirable, you know, spirit that is about to break us down, every yoke on our neck, every fetter, as a hammer, they will be broken in Jesus' name. Number seven, the word of God, finally, as a mirror. What do we do with the mirror? We look ourselves, and if there is any mistake, we take it out. Any correction, we make it. The word of God is the mirror unto us. So quickly, before we pray, number one, the word of God as food. Let's read the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible said, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. We use the food to do what? To nourish ourselves. To, so that we can keep ourselves strong. We, you, we eat every day in order to survive. You don't eat, you, 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 your body will begin to shrink down. You will be losing some weight, losing some weight. At a, a point, you will die. You will lose your life. The same way we are using the word of God to nourish our spirit, our soul. You see, we are made, the flesh we are seeing is just that, uh, you know, it's not going to last for long. The moment, you know, people live on this earth Many, many years ago, but today they have not, they cannot be found anymore because they are gone. The body is gone, but they are eternal beings. The soul will never die. The spirit is alive. So that's why we have to, instead of taking care of this body alone, we must also nourish our soul with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but shall also feed on the word of God. Hallelujah. We must feed on the word of God. First Peter chapter 2. The book of First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. As a baby also desire the milk of his mother. <laughs> These days we don't see that often. We are who are from another country far away. You know, breath feed is very important for the nutrition of the baby. So as believers, the word of God is indispensable for us. It has mighty impact. It's for our growth, our spiritual growth. That's why we have to desire that sincere meat. What food is to our body, the word of God is to our spirit. Acts chapter 20, we are going to have a, a whole lot of reading today, so be prepared. In case you can't follow through, take notes you read at home. Acts chapter 20. We are going to read verse 27. Hallelujah. For I have not shunned 
to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I will have exposed everything to you. Verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. To feed, to nourish. It's not by bread. It's not communion. Communion is just a, a rite, a ritual to commemorate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the real food we are eating from the word of, uh, in the church is the word of God. So a church that doesn't put emphasis on the word of God, only just praise, only just, no. It is, we, are, we are by the word of God. Hallelujah. To feed the church of God, which has, he has purchased with his own blood. The law, it cost him his life so that the church can be alive today. It costs his life. He shed his blood to buy the church. So if we are not feeding the church of God with the word of God and the church of God, the brethren died, spiritual speaking, the Lord said, I will require their blood from your hand. And I pray as we are listening to the word of God, it's not only the work of the pastor, it's not only the work of the workers, but it's all the work of everybody. And we are going to do it in Jesus' name. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolf enter in, in among you, not sparing the flock. Verse 32, let's jump to 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his great, which is able to build you up. That's the main purpose. The word of God as food will build your, your spiritual muscles. You know, you begin to develop, begin to develop, uh, you know, so that and uh, to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And the Lord will give us that in Jesus' name. For that reason, there must be a hunger for the word of God. As we are here, if we continue, we continue, and you, we, we, haven't really, we don't release you on time, some people will start fainting. Because why? We have to nourish our body. The same way the Spirit of God is thirsting, is hungry after the Word of God. If you remain the whole day without reading a, ver a Bible passage, a verse, you, it's not good for your spirit. If you haven't heard the word of God, but you chat, you talk on the phone, you listen to news, you do all kind of stuff. You talk, you, you, you bite, bite and all that. But the word of God that will correct your life, you have not heard it, you have not read it, you have not spoken it. You are not doing well. You, you must hunger for the word of God. You must not lose your spiritual hunger for the word of God. A normal, healthy person has a natural appetite for food, isn't it? Hallelujah. A, he, a normal person gets hungry. What happens if you stop eating? What's going to happen? You die. You die. You, you, as you are feeding your, 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 your body, feed the spirit of God, uh, feed your, your, your soul with the word of God also. What happens if you stop feeding on the word of God? Technically, you stop feeding your spirit and your spiritual life inevitably will go to die will die. And I pray that we will be all be awakened so that we will not neglect our spirits, our souls in Jesus' name. You eat the same food over and over again, isn't it? Sometimes you say it's boring. Oh, you know, you may change a little bit, you know, let me change. But you, the food that you love, you eat it over and over. So don't say, oh, I have heard this before. Pastor has preached this before. Or oh, when I was in this church, I heard that. So this word of God doesn't concern me. No. You hear over as you eat your food, your favorite food. You keep eating it. You are not tired of it. Eat, feed on the word of God over and over again. Don't get tired. You should not be tired of reading the word of God, of hearing the same scripture again and again. I have read it. I have heard that before. That's a very, very wrong attitude towards the Lord. Is President Donald Trump call you now and want to tell you something? You are not going to say, oh, I've listened to all the things that you have been saying on the news. I have a big screen TV in my, my room. Therefore, I don't need to come to you. No, it's an insult. So the word of God, no matter how repetitive it is, its repetition is for what? Emphasis. Hear it again. It will heal your soul. It will heal your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. New light from the same truth of scripture. New revelation every moment you read the Bible. 
I have heard this before. Oh, but the way I read it today, the Spirit of God opened my mind to another dimension. That's why we say the Word of God is lively. It's spirit. It's not just the letter. The letter has a Roman a novel. You read, you know, that idea can become obsolete. People read it. People, you know, there are some discoveries back, back in the days. Some scientists discover some stuff. They wrote many, many books about it. But as of today, those ideas are obsolete. They are not essential anymore. But the word of God is lively. You read it yesterday, you have an understanding. You read it this morning, it's not going to give a contradictory understanding, but an, another amplified version, amplified understanding. That makes the word of God lively. We are talking about the impact, the mighty, mighty impact of the word of God. So don't be tired of hearing the scripture, new revelation every moment. You are what you eat, isn't it? If you eat junk food, you are junk. You become fat. You become, you, 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 you have all the bacteria, you know, you take all kind of weight. But if you are eating good food, you, you, you maintain your, 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 you'll be fit, hallelujah. To be fit and healthy, you need to eat the right food. Listen to your doctor. The same way our spiritual doctor is the word of God, is our pastor, our leaders, is the Holy Ghost. As we come, we need advice. You go, you do your physical checkup every, annually. Why don't you want to do physical checkup? The Holy Spirit is there. Don't say, I've heard it. Listen to it again. The law will amplify things for you. He will point out some you know, pitfall for you, avoid those pitfall, and you will live for his glory in Jesus' name. To be fit and healthy spiritually, you need to eat good spiritual food. Not all restaurants prepare good food. Is that true or not? Uh-huh. The FDA, all, you know, annually gives certificate. If you are not preparing the right food, I'm not talking about fast food. It has, it's approved. Even though it's not good food, it's approved. But hygienic-wise, if you are not keeping all the hygiene, all the, you're not respecting the rules, FDA will take your certificate, they will close your store. See? So, but still, in, um, in all these restaurants, not all of them have the good food. So the same way, not all churches preach the word of God. Hallelujah. And in these days, there's a church of Satan. You'll be surprised. People back in the day, if they are awake, they bring them back in the world today. Some, some vocabulary, some things we are hearing these days, they will be so surprised, so shocked. The world doesn't care anymore. The world is going crazy. But by going to the right church, listen to the word, undiluted word of God from the throne of grace, you will be fed with that spiritual food. We must also eat the right food as well if we so that we may not suffer sickness. We need to eat protein, you know. Protein needs to be in our food, isn't it? Hallelujah. If there's no protein, you suffer what? Malnutrition. I remember when I was a child, back, back in the day, I don't know. That word is not current anymore. I've never heard it in America, but in Africa I did. It's called koshako. Koshako. It's lack of protein, protein in your nutrition. The same way, if you are fed with the word of God that is not from the throne of grace, you will be spiritually kosher core, a big tummy, but you will not grow. And the trumpet will sound, you'll be left, but the Lord will heap loss in Jesus' name. We're all going to be there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God's word is faith food. The, the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. Because of time, we are not going to read that. But let's jump to number two. The word of God as a water. What do we do? Use water with? We use water to clean ourselves, to wash. Let's read the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 25 to 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. So let's jump to verse 26, rather. 25, husband, love you, you know. So on and so forth. Verse 26. 
that he might sanctify. You know, let me do service. Let's go to verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave his, himself for it. The Lord suffered for the church. He paid the church with his own blood. And for that reason, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of what? Water. He didn't say blood. The blood of God, of Jesus, washed the church. But here, he's also using what? Another item, the word of God. By washing of the word of God. So the word of God has impact as food for nutrition, but as water to nourish, to nourish and also to wash away any dirty things out of our system. You can drink the water to sustain you. The same thing, you can use water to cleanse yourself. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 119. Let's quickly read that. The book of Psalm chapter 119 verse, verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. 9, verse 9. Whither will, whither withal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? How do you remain cleansed? By listening to the word of God. And later we are going to see as a mirror, as you are here, maybe you have done something terrible yesterday. Because... You have so much disobeyed the word of God. The Holy Spirit talked to you. You neglect. You shut him down. You know, he's, he's very sensitive also. He will leave you. He, he will leave you. He's not going to talk to you anymore. To the point that you have uh, your conscience see with hot iron. And you repeat the same sin. You don't even feel that it's a sin anymore. Praise the Lord. Uh, but by the grace of God, as you are here, the word of God is explaining, talking. As we are talking, the Spirit of God, you hear that word, you hear, ah, as a mirror. Oh, I was doing this yesterday. But I didn't know it was a sin. But now the word of God labeled that as a sin. As a mirror, you see it. And then you can correct yourself. So the word of God as water cleanse us. It will cleanse you from all your iniquities. So the word of God also as a light. We have seen the word of God as food to nourish our spirit, our, our soul. The word of God as water to cleanse us from all iniquity. And number three, the word of God as light. Psalm, the same chapter, chapter 119 of Psalm. We are going to read from verse 105. Verse 105. The Bible said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Hallelujah. And a light unto my path. As you are walking. And you see, the world, it's not everything that is going on in the world today that is right. As you are walking, the whole world is going to uh, The Bible says, wide is the road that leads to where? Damnation, destruction. But when you consider the whole world today, everybody pretty much is on that road. Because what? The devil has blindfolded them. How can somebody know that I'm going to fall into a big, a big, big hole and I may not recover? I'm not going to recover. And, but the person can still go that way. Except that person is blind. The person is blind. The devil of this world has blinded people. But the word of God, as you are following them, you are walking the same path with them. As you are going, the word of God eliminates you. Clear your way. You see the, that, that's, that's, that's the wrong direction. You do a U-turn, you repent, and you go opposite direction. Hallelujah. As a lamb unto your feet, it's a light that, that lights your path so you may not stumble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read uh, Psalm 19 now. Psalm 19, verse 8. Psalm 19, verse 8. We are seeing the mighty impact of the word of God. The Bible said, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Hallelujah. Enlightening the ear. I'm going to make this pretty current so everybody can see. For the youth, you, are, you may be 
you know, be desiring good things. You know, good is not everything that glitters that is gold. In this contemporary world, in this actual world, there are things. We call them stars, celebrities. There are people. It's not thing. I'm sorry. There are people. We call them celebrities, stars. Some of them boldly they declare, "I am in the Illuminati." It's darkness. The word of God illuminates. Hallelujah. That is darkness. It's a it's a it's a it's a cult. It's a trap of the devil. They will give you everything, popularity. Everything you design on in the world, you have it. But your life, it's like you have signed your, your eternity to die in hell. It, 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 you are not even going to die. Eternity in hell fire with the devil. So, there is no elimination outside the word of God. You see, the, word, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Hallelujah. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. See, verse 8, the statue of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. If you are an illuminati, if you are, those people are your idols, you are worshiping them. Say, you cannot have two masters. The Lord Jesus Christ should be your master. If you have those people who are in darkness as your role model, therefore, you are in the wrong way. As the word of God is coming out now, I pray that your eyes will be open. The Lord will give you the true illumination so that you will see in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8 verse 12. Let's op open our Bible. John chapter 8 verse 12. Chapter 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus unto, again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. He that followeth me. Followeth. It's a continuous action. It's not he that followed me and stopped. Oh, I was born 19, da, 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 da. Baptized, born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. How about now? They say, born again one time, born again forever. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The word of God did not justify that. So the word of God is a light. It's giving us insight now. Say that he that followeth me, old English but current, he that is following me constantly, not one and stop, you know, in the time past. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of Lord. Light of the world. Okay? Shine in darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Illuminati will put you in darkness, but the light of the world that Jesus Christ is will give you the right way to go. Jesus, the word of God that is personified. So the light helps us to see where we are going to so that we don't stumble. We are to walk in the light of his word every day. Anything that comes your way, you say, is this act in the light in the sight, according to the word of God, is this normal? The action or the decision I'm about to take now, is it appropriate? Will the Bible appreciate or approve what I'm, I'm about to do? It's the light. Hallelujah. It's a formula. You, when you, you obey the formula, you get that result. As light dominates darkness, God's word is guaranteed to triumph. Hallelujah. So it's a, that's a saying that uh, a lie rise up uh, and run faster. It rise speed even more than an uh, awesome bolt. It ran fast. The fastest runner ever. See? So lie always run, 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 run. But the truth rise late and walk as a chameleon, as a toro, but one step at a time. One step at a time. The lie, stumble, fall, break his leg. He's not going to move anymore. The truth will, you know, overpass the, li the lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, as light dominates darkness, God's word, as a, the truth, will guarantee us triumph always. So, let us cleave unto this truth. 
which is the word of God. And we have all this impact in Jesus' name. So, the word of God has food to our spirit, our soul. The word of God has a water to our soul to clean us, to, to wash us, to take all the bugs away. The word of God has a light to lighten our path. The word of God, number four, has medicine. What does medicine do? It heals us when we are sick. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4. We are going to read verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Cherish the word of God. You know, jealously keep it. You know, don't just keep it. Share it too. Share the word of God. But the one, the understanding you have, make sure you don't lose it. Share the word of God because you have to evangelize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Hallelujah. The word of God is a health. It's, it's, a, it's our healing. It heals us. The word of God. It heals us. It's a healing. The word of God by the word of God alone. Let me just, you know, clarify something for you. In this intellectual world we are, people don't believe these days. See, as you come now, especially, you know, our invitees, those who came to visit us, you are not visiting us. This is your church in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. But you trust that the chair you will sit on it's solid enough to carry you. You didn't taste it. You didn't touch it. These people, they have set a trap for me. No, as you come, you sat down. But when it comes to the word of God, to trust the word of God, sometimes we, 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 we try to argue. No. Believe the word of God. Hallelujah. And he will do you good things in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a healing. Psalm chapter 107 verse 12, verse 20. 107, Psalm chapter 107, verse 20. The Bible says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Hallelujah. It's a healing. It's a, it gives all deliverance. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Make sure you write the word, the, the, the passages. You may read at home. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. There's a scenario here. We all know it. Let's jump, jump through it. Verse, the, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. This guy knows the, 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 the hierarchy in the army as a centurion. He knows that no matter how old I am, no matter how tall or short I am, big or skinny, no matter how it is, the fact that I am a centurion, everybody that is under me will receive command from me. Hallelujah. And then he say, Lord, I know you are up there. You are my creator. You don't have to leave the souls and come to me alone. It's, it will be so selfish. Just say a word. I believe in your word. Because in the army, when I say you sit down, the person sit down. You go over there, the person is running. It's not just walking because he knows the authority are high. Therefore, he say, Lord, let's see in uh, verse uh, 13. He tell the Lord, you know, just come in, say a word. And my servant, I know my servant will be healed. And the Lord, Jesus Christ, say, man, I have, say, verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed. Yes, uh, tomorrow, a day after. What time? The same time. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. It's a medicine. He sent his word and healed them all and delivered them from their destruction. When you are in trouble, say the word of God. Proclaim the word of God. 
I shall live, I shall not die, and you will live to declare his glory in Jesus' name. Speak the word of God. Not just listen to it, but declare it. The more you declare it, the more powerful it will be for you in Jesus' name. And I was saying earlier that the world is so intellectual to the point that people don't really believe these days. I've seen it. I'm sorry to open this parenthesis. It may shock you. I'm a village boy from Africa. I've seen when they talk about juju, a lot of people have not known it. In the village, I've seen people. You can throw stuff to them. They say word, that thing is not going to touch them. Even bullet. It's true. These people believe in devil. They use some word, magical word. They say it, things happen. See, they can be in the darkness and do some stuff, and somebody will get sick in his sleep. Evil sickness will happen. What's the connection? The person is not linked to the person directly. We have seen it. But today, people don't believe. Because what? The devil is blinding people. The same way the devil is, a, is just a, a, a thief. He has stolen some stuff, some strategies from heaven. But our God has the power. Hallelujah. When you declare the word, things will happen in Jesus' name. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what going to happen? I fear no evil because thou art with me. The word of God is a protection. He will protect you as you declare it. Power is in it in Jesus' name. Before we pray, the word of God is a defensive weapon. It's to defend us. Ephesians chapter 6. We are going to only read one verse today. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's jump to verse 7. Verse 17 rather. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. Because of time. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. The sword of the spirit. Dividing. Putting asunder. Breaking. Dividing. You know, destroying, killing. As we have seen in the... In a, in a, in a, Said the scripture, how David has prepared his mighty men of valor to destroy, to de defend those people. See, the sword of God defend us. The word of God here defending us. Matthew chapter 4, verse, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Quickly. But it is written and said, I, but he has... He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Let's jump to verse 7. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 10. Verse 10. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence Satan, for it is written. The Lord overcame the devil because of the word of God. It is written. It's not what my uncle said. It's not what I think. Or it's not fair. That fairness is not with the devil. As our children used to say this day. Oh, what you do is not fair. The devil doesn't understand that language. Use the word of God. There's no fairness, fairness in the eyes of the devil. In the eyes of the wicked one. The world lies under the power of the wicked. Hallelujah. Therefore... It is written. The devil doesn't feel. He say, oh, Jesus, I'm going to try. The devil will try you. Only the word of God will come to your rescue. Hallelujah. It's a defensive weapon. Word of God as a food. Word of God as the water. Word of God as light. As medicine. As a defensive weapon. Hallelujah. Number six. Word of God as fire and hammer. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. Everything is written for our instruction jeremiah chapter 23 i pray that the lord will touch you you will understand and you utilize the mighty power in the word of god in jesus name jeremiah 23 verse 28 the verse 28 said the prophet that has a dream you know let's jump to verse 29 rather it is not my word like a as a fire, hallelujah. What does a fire do? To burn. 
to burn undesirable books, some friends that suggest you evil ideas. They are not going to be burned, but those ideas is like uh, in the cloud, hanging. Sometimes you'll be in trouble, and the devil will be throwing those fiery dark to you. Those evil thoughts will come to you. Divorce your wife, or divorce your husband. Oh, do this. Oh, go and go and, you know, you know, why don't you accept the advance of this guy? He has, you know, see how sharp he is. Always clean. He loves you, but is he according to the will of God? And those suggestions as a fiery dart, they will be coming to your mind, to your thoughts. But as the word of God, use the word of God, it is written to clear those clouds, hallelujah, to bombard all those evil ideas from your thoughts so that the word of God will occupy your mind. The Lord will bless you at the right time in Jesus' name. Says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces, hallelujah. Everyone that will try you will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, the fire to burn undesirable books and to break the yoke, the yokes from the neck, from our necks. And it will be done in Jesus' name. Before we pray, number seven, the mirror. The mirror, is, so let's read the book of uh, James. James chapter 1 verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. We are going to read all the way to verse 25. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Let's be serious about it. Verse 23. For if any man, but, but for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. How? How miserable is that? You wake up in the morning, you go to the, you know, to clean yourself, to, you use uh, the restroom, that's a glass. The mirror right there. You see yourself. There are stuff here, stuff here. So by the eye. Okay, I'm going to take that as uh, my eyelashes. Uh, I think this is like uh, my lipstick. That's okay for me. And you just draw, dra uh, dress on that and you go. Will people take you seriously? You cannot even open your mouth. If you are coming to church, you're hearing the word of God. The word of God exposes you. Exposes you. The word of God, you know, explains things to you. But you're not taking it seriously. You will be like somebody that is acting as a fool. You say, you say what? Be ye doers, but don't deceive yourself. You are wasting your time. And I pray that your time here will be valuable in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 25. But whoso looked into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God that we are reading, and continueth therein, obeying it. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a, he, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And we will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Brethren, the scriptures is written with an ultimate purpose. It's for us to understand. The Lord spoke in clear language. The word of God is constant truth. The word of God is a complete truth truth. Nothing is hidden. The word of God is comprehensive. As we are speaking now, we are using clear terminology. We are using contemporary word so that we are not speaking in tongues. No. We are speaking English. No matter how bad my accent is, I hope you understand. And the word of the law is explaining things for you so you can understand. The, it's comprehensive. The word of God is timeless truth. The same yesterday, the same today, the same tomorrow. The word of God is eternal truth. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the world will endure forever. Brethren, what are you doing with the word of God? If you cherish this word, you hear it jealously, you keep it, and then you act upon it. The mighty, mighty impact of the scripture will never be lost in your life in the name of Jesus. Remember Jesus 
is the central message. He is the word personified. So all this is summarized in Jesus. If you made Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the Bible, he paid the price for your salvation. I didn't do it. No pastor did it. No creator of a church did it. No overseer. Nobody did it. Only Jesus that we are all preaching, you know, pay the, the price for your salvation. You believe in him. You forsake your sins. He will touch your life and you will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's all stand up on our feet to pray. What have you received today? What is going on in your life? What is the word of God for you? Do you go at home and just forget about the word of God you hear on Sunday? And the next Sunday, you just, oh, where's my Bible? You take it and you come again. And you stay the whole day. You haven't read the word of God. You, you, you serve to YouTube. You have not, not even heard about the preacher. All our videos, all our things, sermons are on YouTube. Are you listening to them? Are you asking for tips? Are you feeding yourself in the right restaurant? Or are you just going after the junk food? Or a church that prays always, praise, praise, singing, uh, inviting some, 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 some very good singers, you know, to just come and you know we are having praise worship, but not a single word of God. Is that the right church for you? All restaurants are not good restaurants. All churches are not good churches. The church that put emphasis on the word of God, that church will benefit you the most. Pray that the Holy Spirit will talk to your life, will touch your heart. Pray that the Spirit of God will touch you so that your life will never remain the same. In Jesus' name we prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Everlasting God, Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for this moment. We give you praise because you have revealed yourself. We have known Jesus Christ as the word personified. We have made him known to the, your people. Everlasting God, we have seen the word of God as food to feed our, our spiritual, uh, our spirit, our souls. We have seen the word of God as water to cleanse us from all our iniquities. As they have heard, as they are hearing the word of God, I pray any spot of sickness, any spot of sin in their life, the word of God will cleanse them in the name of Jesus Christ. The light that lightens our path. No other light outside. No sacrificial lamb outside, but the sacrificial lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that the word of God is a meeting to our spirit. Everybody that is sick, no matter how the sickness, no how bad it is, in the name of Jesus. Let that sickness vanish in the name of Jesus Christ. As a weapon, Father, we are going to utilize it. It is written. So the devil will flee from us in the name of Jesus Christ. As a hammer and a fire, we are burning all the fiery darts of the the enemy. All the weapons that the enemy is throwing at us, we are removing them one by one. We are breaking them in pieces. Every yoke over our neck, every chain over our feet, any kind of sin in the name of Jesus, we are breaking them in the harm of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. As a mirror, Father, we are going to the world. We are constantly reviewing ourselves. As we read the word of God, give us new insight so we may see ourselves and correct ourselves. All this, we are doing it so that we can be fit are waiting for your second coming. You can take us to hope, Father God. Nobody among us will lose. Nobody among us will be lost. No one will be missed. We are all going to assemble together and feast at your table. We thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are blessed. Uh, on behalf of our pastors, he extends his greetings. Uh, so let's fellowship a little bit. Make sure you shake the hands of everyone before you go. Can we stand on our feet to share the, uh, the grace? Want to go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Forget not to read the word of God because his impacts are very, very great. Amen.